Hey, what's up everybody? It's Brian here with another tutorial. This will be part three in my Premiere series. This time we're gonna use adjustment layers yet again, but we're gonna cover how to do transitions and make them smooth. So let's get going. Alright, before we begin, I want to introduce you guys to this uh, timeline I just created. This is where we're going to be making those transitions as you just saw in that video. Nice and quick, easy. I'm going to show you guys how to do a whip up transition and then a side pan as well. Notice one thing. We're moving up. Move to the side. Whenever you're making transition to cuts, methodology tells you you should go in the same direction. You never want to try and make reverses. Especially if the velocity of the movement is pretty high. It's not really high here, but it definitely is high here. So we would go from left to right. We were never going to go up, down, or right to left here because the shot's going left to right. So, and this one is going up. So let's go to get started. I'm going to show you guys how to do this. In my miscellaneous, I've already created the adjustment layer, but if you haven't already, just remember you come down, new item, adjustment layer. Now, one thing I haven't done yet is I haven't really covered what is an adjustment layer. Now, an adjustment layer, I have said in the past, will allow you to make effects to anything that's below on your tracks, pretty much, okay, on your playhead. So what you actually want to understand here is that the way the adjustment layer works is it's just a traditional layer. Think of it as a solid graphic. Well, what's different is it has adjustment layer clicked. You'll also notice that I can turn any of my clips into an adjustment layer. So... Premiere just pretty much gives us a free layer to add that effect to. So with that in mind, what we can actually do is create this adjustment layer in a way that's going to help us and benefit us, but also give us the ultimate customization options. One thing also I'm going to cover in this tutorial too, uh, and I'll introduce this in another tutorial, is nesting. Uh, one way to work around some of the issues we have in Premiere when we apply effects to an adjustment layer and they won't necessarily translate down here, as I've said before in previous tutorials, is to nest your adjustment layer. So that's what we're gonna do. But before we do that, let's time our adjustment layer out. I'm gonna zoom all the way in here, just drag that, or you can scroll down, or you can use your hotkeys. And then I'm gonna actually use a hotkey here. I'm gonna hit shift and left, okay, just once. That's gonna move five frames over. Use my razor tool, I'm gonna create a cut, and I'm gonna delete that part of the adjustment layer. Let's hold down shift again and forward. It's going to move forward five frames. Shift, move forward twice. We're going to move forward 10 frames. Let's create a cut there and let's delete that part of the adjustment layer. Now, before I do anything else, what I'm going to do is I want to right click this and hit nest. What this is going to do, I'm going to call this whip up. It's going to create a transition. What is this going to do for us? It's going to nest the sequence. And basically what nest means is you're taking a sequence and putting it in another sequence. So what we did is we created a sequence here. So if I double click and here's whip up and now it's in this sequence. But notice my screen went black. So what we have to do is we have to come in here, right click, and we have to hit adjustment layer. And now it's back to being an adjustment layer. Okay. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is I want to add an offset to this. So let's come to our effects and let's type in offset. It's in your distort. Now, what I want to do is I want to slide over here almost to the end, but not quite yet. I want to move pretty much. So we want to move up, which means we want to offset in this direction to about 1620. I did the math already. I know it's 1620. Um, but yeah, so you want to go to 1620. Let's set a keyframe. Now we come back almost to the beginning, but I don't need to type in any numbers here. I just hit reset. So it comes back. This is where it needs to be. Nothing moved, but just know that's because we moved an entire frame in a direction. And this is what we want. Uh, I'm actually going to set my in and my out right here for now. And then I have this button up called loop playback. Let's click that. And that way I'm only working here. So we have our offset. The next thing I want to do is I want to add a blur. So let's add a directional blur. Just tap in direction. Add that. Uh, and you'll notice it's already blurred in the direction that we want, which is what we want. And I kind of want to come to where the transition point is, but I actually want to move forward two frames and then I'm going to hit blur length. Let's just type in 200 for now. And I'm going to come back to the beginning. I'm going to hit reset. I'm going to come back to the very end. I'm also going to hit reset. 
Okay. Actually, we don't need to be at the very beginning or end yet. Let's just move these in. And there we go. We, we have a nice little whip, but we're not quite done yet. We want to smoothen this out, make it look a little bit more natural. Okay. We don't, the human being doesn't move in sudden movements. We move in arcs, we accelerate and we de decelerate. If you don't believe me really quick, you're probably at your computer or watching this, take your hand in front of you and move it up. You don't just gently move up. It's going to accelerate up and then slow down. Okay. That's because of how our muscles work. So if this is a person holding a camera, even though this is actually a gimbal, what you're going to do is start moving, but then you're going to slow down to the point that you want without even trying. That's just how we move as human beings. So let's replicate that real quick. So let's come, into, let's come in here before we add any more effects. There's a few more effects I want to add, but before we add any more effects, let's highlight these layers, these keys. Uh, oh, I forgot to move this one. Let's move this down. All right, so knowing that we don't move in that direction, we want to create some fall-offs, some gradients, but we don't want to necessarily have a situation where we're accelerating to the other end. We want to accelerate and slow down. So we can't do that right now. So what we have to do is I'm going to set a keyframe here of 200. You're like, well, wait, you said two keyframes here. It's all right. I'm going to explain it here in a second. I'm going to create a cut here using my razor tool C right on the playhead. And we're going to work on this just this first one for right now. Just click on this, but do not move your playhead yet. If you do, you're going to throw yourself off. And then I'm going to set a keyframe right here on the shift to center. Click on this one. I'm going to do the same. Now on the first one, I'm going to slide this keyframe in. Just this is just so I can see it. I'm going to right click on the first keyframe. I'm going to ease out on the middle keyframe. I'm going to ease in. All right. So once you have your eases, come in here, drop down and then let's go ahead and drag this handle as far over as we can. And then I'm going to drag this handle in and up. What we've done here is we've created a, a curve of acceleration, which is what we want. And we have a nice hold after, but we don't need it. So I'm just going to drag this over to the very end. Now on the blur, I want to do the same. So on the, this, on the first one, I'm going to ease out. And on this one, I'm going to ease in like so. Let's do the same. Now you'll notice the graph here looks a little bit different. But that's okay. I'm just going to drag this out like so. I'm going to bring this keyframe in so we can see it. And I'm just going to drag these up. So it accelerates into it. Let's drag them back. Let's drag this keyframe back over to the end. Now I also want to drag these keyframes and start them at the very beginning. And if I just scrub real quick, you'll notice these keyframes, there's very little going on, very little going on. Then boom, all of a sudden we're in a blur. And so all we have to do now is we have to reverse it on this side. So let's do that. So let's drag this keyframe in and this keyframe in. And remember, this one is going to be 200. This is going to be 200 here. So what we can actually do now in this case is delete this. We no longer need it. Just move this keyframe over. Let's move this over here so we can just actually work. On this first keyframe, I want to ease out. This keyframe, I want to ease in. Same thing. But now we want the speed on this side. So what I'm going to do is I am actually going to lift up here like so. I'm going to drag in here, get this nice curve. In fact, I could probably go even higher. There you go. Okay, let's drag this keyframe back to the beginning, this keyframe to the end. Let's do the same thing here. Ease out, ease in. Okay, let's drag these out. And let's drag these, oops, like so. Basically, what I did here is this is where the acceleration is going to decelerate and fall off. Let's smoothen that out. You'll notice it worked because we come here towards the end. Nothing is happening. We could probably even relax that fall off, but let's take a look. Very fast. Nice little whip. We can even slow this down. Now, we have a little bit of a problem here I want to solve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another adjustment layer. You'll see this trick done a lot in a different in different ways. So we will do all the effects on a single adjustment layer. Uh, but what I want to do 
is just using another adjustment layer here that's maxed out to the end. Come to the middle. Let's go over one, two frames. So we're about in the middle. It's a little bit of an average. And then I'm going to type in another blur. Let's go to effects. Directional blur. And I'm going to increase the blur length quite a bit. We're just getting rid of what's going on here. Um, setting that keyframe. So let's just go to 400 to be safe. Come back to the beginning, hit reset to the very end, hit reset. Oops. Hit reset. Now, what I want to do this time is I'm going to right click. I'm going to hit ease out. I'm going to right click here. I'm going to hit ease in. But then here, I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit Bezier. Okay. You'll notice it comes in the same symbol over here. But now what's going to happen is I have this shape, a bell shape, and this is what we want. Okay, so let's take a look. Breaks up the little edges we had here, which is what we want. And we have this nice little transition. See what it looks like in context. All right, it looks a little fast, but it's getting the job done. And now you guys have a better understanding how to use adjustment layers, nest, as well as create a transition. Let's do this again. We're going to do this much faster over here. Let's do another whip. Okay, let's go over. Now, in this case, I actually kind of want to slow this one down. Let's go over here. Two, three. Just a little bit slower. It's still pretty fast. Don't let it deceive you. Let's come in here. Let's right click. We're going to nest. Call this whip pan. We're going to do pretty much the same process we did before. We're going to go offset. Come to the very end. Now I want to move in this direction. So let's right click. Make sure that's an adjustment layer. Let's move this over like so and negative 960 set that keyframe let's come back to the beginning let's just reset make sure what we're looking at is what we want it is what we want cool let's add that directional blur okay let's go over two frames Oops. directional blur let's increase that up now we're in the wrong direction so i gotta switch this to the 90 degree angle so it's going side to side and let's go to 300 this time. Let's set that keyframe. Let's go to the very beginning, zero. Let's go to the very end, zero. Now you'll notice I accidentally hit this, uh, I clicked on that, but that's okay. And there we go, we have a whip. Okay, let's massage this in like we did on the other one. To do that, let's come to the beginning or the middle, I should say, the actual transition point. With our playhead at the center of the transition, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna come in here to offset, I'm gonna set a keyframe, come here to directional blur, blur length, I'm gonna set a keyframe there. We're gonna grab those, I'm gonna nudge them in so we can see them. Let's go here, let's ease these frames. Out. In. Okay, we want to speed up here, so let's pull this in. And there we go. Let's do, let's pull these back out. Cool. Ease out. Ease in. Same concept. Slow these down. Looks pretty good. Back to the middle. Let's move these. Uh, I don't, I can just move this keyframe over and then we could do this keyframe here. Uh, let's move this over now. Let's ease these frames. We want the speed here on the A end. He's out. It's too much. There we go. 
And there we go, you have a nice whip. That's one way to use nested adjustment layers, guys. It's another way you can use adjustment layers at effects so that they actually can modify the footage below them. This is how you do transitions. And this is also a very clean way to do. Yes, technically you can add those keyframes and those effects uh, right here on the footage. But let's take a look at this. Let's say maybe I don't want this whip pan here. Let's just move this to the side right now. Let's say maybe I want this right here to be going up. I don't, I wouldn't do this ever in a cut, but what you can do now is I'll just bring this over and then take a look at this. Boom. Right. And maybe we can even do this one over here. So this is how I work procedurally in Premiere. I, I work procedurally in any software I can from Photoshop all the way up to Nuke. Uh, it's just a cleaner way to work. I like to work in ways that can be modified down below and above at the same time without affecting everything else. And uh, yeah, that's how I work. So if you guys like this video, definitely leave a like. I want to hear from you guys if you have any questions on how I did this workflow or if it's new to you or if you've never seen this before. I want to hear from you guys. If you want a tutorial request, definitely leave that below as well. I'm looking to do whatever you guys want to hear, see, and learn. So be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon. There'll be more videos coming out here, and I'll see you in the next video.